You've heard the stories, right? About creatures that can take the shape of animals, or worse, people. Most people call them legends. But ask anyone who spent time near the mountains in the southwest, and they'll tell you not to be so sure. This story happened to a guy named James, a guy I knew through a friend of a friend. He wasn't the type to scare easily, an outdoorsman, always hiking, camping, you know, the adventurous type. But what he experienced that one night in the desert changed him completely. He's never gone back out there since. It started with a camping trip. James and his two friends, Marcus and Dave, decided to head into a remote part of the Arizona wilderness. They'd been there before, beautiful cliffs, vast open skies, and a complete disconnect from civilization. This time, they wanted to hike deeper than they'd ever gone, past the usual trails and into the more untouched areas. The first day was perfect, clear skies, cool breeze. By sunset, they found the ideal spot to set up camp, nestled between a few cliffs. They built a fire, shared stories, laughed, and eventually settled into their tents as the cold desert night rolled in. James woke up at around 2 a.m., something pulling him out of sleep. At first, he didn't know what it was. The fire was dying down, and the only sound was the wind rustling through the brush. But then he heard it, a faint scratching noise, like something was moving just outside the tent. He figured it was an animal, maybe a coyote or a raccoon scavenging around for food. Annoyed, but not worried, he unzipped his tent to scare it off. But when he stuck his head out, nothing was there. The camp was empty, just the last embers of the fire and the silhouettes of the cliffs against the moonlight. As he zipped his tent back up, he heard it again, the scratching, louder this time. And it wasn't coming from the ground, it was coming from above. James froze, his eyes darting toward the cliffs. His heart pounded as he stared up at the jagged rocks. At first he saw nothing, just shadows cast by the moonlight. But then movement, something large and quick, darting from one cliff to another, almost too fast to track. He told himself it was a trick of the light, that maybe he was still half asleep. But as he stared harder he saw it. A figure crouched on the edge of the cliff, its eyes glowing faintly in the darkness reflecting the firelight. It wasn't an animal. It wasn't human. It was something else. James quickly ducked back into his tent, trying to rationalize what he'd just seen. He told himself it was nothing, probably just his tired mind playing tricks. But then the scratching sound returned, this time right outside his tent. His breath caught in his throat as the shadow fell over his tent. It was huge, too tall to be a coyote or a bear, taller than any person. He could hear the slow, deliberate steps as it circled the camp. Then the sound stopped. The silence was deafening. Suddenly, a voice broke the silence. It was Marcus's voice calling out to him. James, come out here. You gotta see this. Relief flooded through him for a split second. But then he stopped. There was something wrong with the voice. It was Marcus's, but not quite. It was hollow, distorted like someone mimicking him. James, come on. You need to see this. James stayed perfectly still, not breathing, not moving. He knew Marcus wouldn't be up at this hour, and even if he was, he wouldn't be talking like that. James, the voice was closer now, right outside the tent. He could hear it breathing, raspy, unnatural, like something forcing itself to sound human. The zipper of his tent started to move, slowly, painfully slow, like whatever was outside was toying with him. James grabbed the knife he kept beside him and held his breath. The zipper stopped halfway, and for a moment, everything was still. Then, in the dim light of the moon, he saw it. An arm, long and unnaturally thin, creeping through the opening. Its skin was pale, almost translucent with patches of fur. The fingers were too long, the nails blackened and cracked. It felt like time stopped as he watched that hand stretch closer to him. Just then, he heard Marcus and Dave's voices yelling from their tents. James, get out! Run! In a split second, James grabbed his pack and bolted out of the tent. The thing, whatever it was, let out a low, guttural growl as it gave chase. He didn't dare look back, didn't need to. He could hear its heavy, uneven footsteps thundering after him. The three of them ran, scrambling through the desert brush, hearts pounding, adrenaline fueling every step. As they neared a clearing, the footsteps behind them slowed and then stopped. Silence. They didn't stop running until they were miles from camp not slowing down until the sun began to rise. Exhausted and shaken, they made it back to the nearest town by midday. But when they returned later that week with a park ranger to retrieve their gear, everything was gone. 
Their tents, their fire pit, even their footprints, erased like they had never been there. James didn't talk much about what happened that night, not for a long time. But the one thing he did say when pressed was this. The last thing he saw, just before he ran, were the creature's eyes. And they weren't animal eyes. They weren't human either. They were cold, empty, and full of hunger. A few months later, Marcus and Dave started acting strange. They became distant, paranoid, like they were always looking over their shoulders. Both of them swore they could still hear scratching outside their windows at night, even after they moved to different cities. Marcus went missing a year after the trip, just vanished without a trace. As for James, he tried to move on with his life. But one night, he woke up to that same scratching sound. Except this time, it wasn't outside. It was inside his house, in his room. He never saw the creature again, but the eyes, those cold, hollow eyes, they still haunt him every time he closes his. And he knows deep down that whatever it was, it's not finished with him yet. 